So your pattern says to start this piece, you're gonna need to make a magic loop with six single crochet stitches in it, which is what this is. But I'm gonna show you a different method because the magic loop is one of the trickiest things to do in crochet. So as a complete beginner, it may be easier to start something in the round using this method, which uses a chain instead. The difference is that there might be a hole in the middle of your piece by the end of it. So if you don't like that, you can click on the link below to learn how to do the magic loop instead. But don't be discouraged if you aren't able to figure out the magic loop, you can try to master that later. At least you can keep on crocheting things in the round if you learn this method first. So to make this method, we need to take our piece of yarn, lay it on a table so that the cutoff side of the yarn is off to the right. And also you're gonna wanna have a hook and two of your stitch markers handy. Ideally those two stitch markers would be different colors. Now pick up the yarn that's been cut off and loop it once around itself so it's intersecting. Pick up the loop you just made on the right side and then fold it over the rest of the yarn so that the rest of the yarn is in the middle of the circle. Pick up that yarn and then with your other hand hold onto the cutoff piece of yarn and pull until a knot is formed. This is what's called a slip knot. If you're left-handed, you want the knot to be on the right side of your hook. Then you're gonna pull on the yarn connected to the yarn ball until that knot is almost right next to your hook. You don't want it immediately next to your hook because it's gonna make it really hard for you to pull your hook through that loop later on. Then get into your standard crocheting position and hold on to the knot with your thumb and your middle finger. Now we're gonna do four chain stitches. So make sure that your hook is facing you and your hook is in front of the working yarn. Yarn over and pull that yarn through the loop that's on your hook. That was chain stitch number one. If you were to rotate your piece, you could see that you have a little V that your loop on your hook traces back into. Pause for a moment and pick up one of the stitch markers. We wanna put that stitch marker under the top loop of that first V. So I put that stitch mark under the far side of the V, like that. We are gonna come back to that in about three stitches. You'll see why we did that. All right, now let's make three more chain stitches. So yarn over, bring the yarn through the loop on your hook, and then if you notice, I am rearranging every time I do a chain stitch, I rearrange my yarn hand to hold the piece as close as possible to the hook so that I have more control and my chain doesn't get twisted. Here's the fourth chain stitch. If you want to double check, the way you can tell is by looking at the V's that the loop on your hook traces back into. That is V number four, three, two, and then one is the one that has the stitch marker in it. Before we connect the two sides together to turn this line into a circle, let's take the other colored stitch marker and just drape it around the entire chain that we just made. Now take a look at the hole that the first stitch marker, the orange one, is going into. Put your hook in that same hole and this time we want to put the hook under the bottom of the V instead of the top, so it should go the other way. And you've done it correctly when it looks like you have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then lastly, you're gonna do a chain stitch again, yarn over, pull that yarn through the loop on your hook. And now you've made your starting piece Next up, you need to then make the six single crochet stitches that your pattern says to make. Let's take a moment and actually take out the orange stitch marker so it's not in the way. Okay, to make the six single crochet stitches, we wanna make them in the hole that's marked by this green stitch marker. So put your hook into your piece from the front to the back in the same hole that the green stitch marker is in. Then we're going to yarn over, bring the yarn back through 
that piece. So you have two loops on your hook. Yarn over again. Bring it through both loops on the hook. That was your first single crochet stitch. And remember, you always want to use the stitch marker to mark the very first stitch of whatever round you're on. So take this moment to put the orange stitch marker under the V you just made. This is going to be super helpful to be doing in this very first round because it sometimes can be hard to see where the first stitch is. Okay, so now up to you. If you think that you will be able to tell where the middle of the circle is, you can remove the green stitch marker. I'm going to keep it in there for a few more stitches to make it super clear that I'm doing a second single crochet stitch in exactly the same spot. A third single crochet stitch in exactly the same spot. And really, all of them, all six of them. It's the stitch marker starting to get in my way, so I'm actually going to take out the green stitch marker, put it off to the side, and do my sixth and last stitch in round one. So I think that I've reached the end. It's always a good idea to double check and count. So remember that the stitch marked by your orange stitch marker is stitch number one. Count around and there should be six V's. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Great. And the sixth one has this loop that my hook is coming, uh, hook is in coming out of it, which means, yep, I do really have six single crochet stitches in this loop. Now remember, there is going to be a hole in the middle of your loop with this method, but the tighter that you can make those chains in the very beginning, the smaller this loop is going to be. If you don't like the look of this loop, you can always try learning how to do the magic loop instead, which is a little bit harder. 